welcome students to the next lecture. Uh, today lecture is we are going to talk about the confidence interval estimation for the single population. In the previous lecture we have seen the uh, sampling distribution. Sampling distribution we have seen three uh, result out of the sampling distribution lecture. One is sampling distribution for mean, sampling distribution for proportion and sampling distribution or variance. By using that result we are going to estimate some population parameters. What are you going to estimate? We may estimate the mean of the population or the proportion of the population or the variance of the population that you will see in this lecture. The objective of this course is uh, to distinguish between a point estimate and a confidence interval estimate and construct and interpret a confidence interval estimate for a single population mean using both z and t distributions. Today also in this lecture I am going to introduce z and t distribution. Then form and interpret a confidence interval estimate for a single population proportion, create confidence interval estimate for the variance of the normal population. In the confidence interval what we are going to see today? Uh, confidence intervals for the population mean there are two possibility one is when the population variance sigma square is known other cases when population variance sigma square is unknown. Then confidence interval for the population proportion we had using large samples then confidence interval estimate for the variance of a normal distribution. Before getting into the content we will see what is the estimator and estimate. An estimate of a population parameter is a random variable that depends on sample information. An estimator whose value provides an approximation to the unknown parameter. For example, a specific value of the random variable is called estimate. For example, x bar is estimator for population variance. Similarly, S square sample variance and estimator for population variance, P hat population proportion is estimator for no P cap sample proportion is estimator for population proportion. So, this x bar S square P hat these are called estimator, a specific value of x bar S square P hat is nothing but estimate. In estimate there are two things we can say one is a point estimate is a single number other one is a confidence interval provides additional information about the variability. We can say it is a point estimate and interval estimate because in point estimate is only single number it is not very much reliable but the confidence interval is giving a uh, additional information about the variability of that point estimate. For example, when you look at this picture we say what is a point estimate and interval estimate. A point estimate is a single number and interval estimate provides additional information about the variability of the point estimate. For example, you see that if I if I say tomorrow what is going to be temperature if I say is exactly 35 degree Celsius this is a point estimate. If I give some lower limit and upper limit for this for example, this may be say 30 to 40 that is the confidence interval. When I say 35 it is a single number, but when I say 30 to 40 that is a confidence interval. So, the 30 can be called as a lower confidence limit, the right side can be called as upper control limit 40. So, this is the width of confidence interval the point estimate is just one number single number. Yes. So, point estimate we can estimate population parameter mean mu with the help of sample mean that is x bar. We can estimate population proportion capital P with the help of sample proportion small p. Then another important property of this estimator is it should be unbiasedness. A point estimator theta hat is said to be an unbiased estimator of the parameter theta if the expected value or mean of the sampling distribution theta hat is theta. So, when we can say it is unbiased estimator if the expected value of theta cap equal to theta then we can say 
it is the unbiased estimate. For example, if I say x bar, when, when I can say x bar is an estimator of population proportion, if I say if the expected value of x bar is equal to mean, then we can say x bar is an unbiased estimator. The sample mean x bar is an unbiased estimator for mu. The sample variance small s square is an unbiased estimator for sigma square. The sample proportion small p is an unbiased estimator for population proportion p. Look at the another property of unbiasedness. Suppose if you look at this picture, there are two picture is there, one is for theta 1, another one is theta 2. So, the theta 1, the mean of theta 1 cap is nothing but your theta. So, the theta 1 cap is an unbiased estimator, but theta 2 cap is not unbiased estimator because the mean will be somewhere here, because it is not the population mean. Let us see the unbiasedness of an estimator. There is a two figure is there, one is theta 1 cap, another one is theta 2 cap. If you look at the theta 1 cap, the mean of theta 1 cap is the theta that is the population mean, but the mean of theta 2 cap is away from the population mean. So, we can say theta 1 cap is an unbiased estimator of the population. We can measure the biasedness. Let theta cap be an estimator of theta. The bias in theta cap is defined as the difference between the mean and theta. So, the biasness of theta cap is nothing but the expected value of theta cap minus the theta. The bias of unbiased estimator is 0. If it is 0, we can say there is no biasness. How can we see the most efficient estimator? Suppose there are several unbiased estimator of theta. We have seen sample mean is the one of the estimator of the mean. The most efficient estimator or the minimum variance unbiased estimator of theta is the unbiased estimator with the smallest variance. So, even though there are different estimator to predict the population parameter, we have to see a estimator which is having the smallest variance is the efficient estimator. Let theta 1 cap and theta 2 cap be two unbiased estimator of theta. Based on the same number of sample observation, then theta 1 cap is said to be more efficient than theta 2 cat if the variance of theta 1 cat is less than the variance of theta 2 cat. So, what is the point here is there may be different estimator for the population parameter. If we want to say which is more efficient, we have to see the variance of the estimator. If the variance of the estimator is lesser, then that estimator is the most efficient estimator. The relative efficiency of theta 1 cap with respect to theta 2 is the ratio of their variance. So, relative efficiency is variance of theta 2 cat divided by variance of theta 1 cat, then confidence interval. How much uncertainty is associated with the point estimate of the population parameter? Because when I say the previous example, the temperature is 35 degree, how much uncertainty is associated with the, that point estimate? that uncertainty is expressed with the help of confidence interval. An estimate provides more information about the population characteristics than does a point estimate. So, when compared to point estimate, interval estimate is giving more information about the population. Such interval estimates are called confidence intervals. So, for example, if you say this is the population, I am taking different sample, say the population mean may be say 40. So, I have taken various sample with the help of sample mean I can predict what will be the lower limit and upper limit of this population mean. For example, if I say 35 to 45. So, this interval is nothing but confidence interval. I can go for an exactly an point estimate. For example, if I exactly I can say point estimate is I can say exactly say 40, but the 40 is not much reliable. Confidence interval estimate. An interval give, gives a range of values and confidence interval takes into consideration 
variation in sample statistics from sample to sample because what will happen if there is a big population we may take different samples, but different sample may have different variance. We are constructing the confidence interval with the help of that variance. So, the consideration for the sample to sample is taken with the help of is taken into account with the help of confidence interval. We can construct a confidence interval based on observation from one sample. For example, if I say x bar with the help of one sample, I can predict what is the upper limit and lower limit of your mu. It gives information about closeness to unknown population parameter stated in terms of level of confidence can never be 100 percentage confident. We cannot be always 100 percentage confidence. Let us see what is the confidence interval and confidence level. So, confidence interval is lower limit and upper limit. The confidence level is nothing but the probability. If p a less than theta less than b equal to 1 minus alpha then the interval from A to B is called a 100 into 1 minus alpha confidence interval. So, this interval A to B is taken as the confidence interval. The quantity 1 minus alpha is called a confidence level. So, confidence level is a probability, confidence interval is the lower limit upper limit of population proportion. So, the, con uh, the confidence level alpha is between 0 at and 1. In a repeated samples of population, the true value of the parameter theta would be contained in 100 into 1 minus alpha of intervals calculated this way. The confidence interval calculated in this manner is written as A less than theta less than B with 100 into 1 minus alpha confidence level. Next we will see what is the estimation process. Look at this the left hand side this is the whole population uh, mean mu is unknown we want to predict what is the value of the mean. So, you take the sample the green one say the sample mean is 15. With the help of the sample mean you can say what is the lower limit and upper limit of this population parameter mu at with a certain level of confidence say I am saying I am 95 percentage confident that the mu is between 40 and 60. Then we will go to what is the confidence level. Suppose confidence level is 95, also written as 1 minus alpha. We will see in detail what is alpha. Alpha is called a type 1 error. So, 1 minus alpha is 0.95, a relative frequency interpretation. From a repeated samples, 95 percentage of all the confidence intervals that can be constructed will contain the unknown true parameter. So, what is the meaning of this 95 percentage is? Even though we will see coming slides. Suppose if you construct an interval with some range say 40 to 50. So, what is the meaning of this 95 percentage? So, this interval when you repeat this experiment 100 times nine, there is a 95 percentage of time you can capture the true mean within this interval. Only 5 percentage of the time this true mean may be outside the interval. Yeah. Okay. A specific interval either will contain or will not contain the true parameter. For example, this interval sometime may contain true parameter otherwise may not contain the true parameter. But when I say 95 percentage, 95 percentage of time this interval contain the true parameter. There is only 5 percentage chance uh, this interval will not capture the true parameter. The general formula for confidence interval is point estimate generally point estimate is nothing but your x bar plus or minus this reliability factor we will see later z this is standard error. If you use uh, standard error sigma by root n. So, x bar plus or minus z sigma by root n is nothing but the formula for confidence interval. So, when you say plus it is upper limit if it is minus it is lower limit. The value of the reliability factor depends upon the desired level of confidence. The value of z is depending upon how much confidence level you need to have that we will see. So, the confidence intervals we will see the classification. We can find the confidence interval for the population mean, we can find confidence interval for the population proportion, we can find the confidence interval for the population variance. 
In this population mean there are two category one is sigma square that is the population uh, variance is known sigma square is unknown the population variance is unknown. Whenever the sigma square whenever there is a capital letter that represent about the population whenever there is a small letter that represents about the sample. We will see first one confidence interval for mu that means we are going to find the confidence interval of population mean first case is the sigma square is known sigma square is population standard deviation is known what assumptions population variance sigma square is known population is normally distributed if the population is not normal we have to go for large sample size use large sample so the confidence interval estimate is x bar minus z alpha by 2 sigma by root n less than mu less than x bar plus z alpha by 2 root of sigma divided by root n where sigma alpha by 2 is the normal distribution value. So, this is nothing but it will be like this right. So, this one has come from this formula x bar minus mu sigma by root n. When you when you do adjust this equation you can find the mu upper limit this is upper limit lower limit ok when you do adjust this this z alpha by 2 is nothing but because we are finding both the side. So, this value is alpha by 2 this this value is alpha by 2. So, the remaining places that is 1 minus alpha. So, this 1 minus alpha is called a confidence interval we will see one more term what is the margin of error. The confidence interval x bar minus c alpha by 2 sigma by root n less than mu less than x bar plus z alpha by 2 sigma by root n can be written as x bar plus or minus m e. This m e is nothing but margin of error. So, this term this term we can call it as margin of error. You should be very careful when we say error generally the another name for standard deviation is error when if I write sigma by root n that is standard error if I say z alpha by 2 sigma by root n that is a margin of error all are er error error is nothing but the variation. So, this is error this is we can say this is error this is standard error this is margin of error ok. The standard error whenever you go for sampling that sigma has to be divided by root of n this is the result of central limit theorem ok. Generally we have to look for reducing the margin of error. The margin of error can be reduced by looking at this sigma n and z. If the population standard deviation can be reduced when you reduce sigma obviously margin of error will reduce. When you increase the sample size we can predict more accurately the error can be minimized. So, the margin of error will be minimized ok. What is the meaning of this one is suppose this is one confidence level this is another confidence level for this margin of error for this one margin of error is more this one margin of error is more for this the margin of error is what do you mean whenever the confidence level is small the margin of error also reduced. Then we look at uh, how to find out the reliability factor that is about z alpha by 2. For example, if I suppose if you want to know something at 95 percentage confidence level. So, this is 95 percentage confidence level. So, the remaining is 5 percentage when you divide this 5 percentage by 2 so the right hand side will get 0 0.025 the left hand side will get 0 0.025 when you look at the z table when the right hand side is 0 0.025 the corresponding z value is 1.96 on right hand side the left side it is minus 1.96 this z 1.96 is called upper confidence limit the left hand side it is called lower confidence limit the value of z has to be captured by looking at what is the alpha value. So, when you look at the table 
the z value for 0 0.025 is plus or minus 1.96 from the standard normal table. This we can find out. Mm, look at this. Suppose if the confidence level is 80 percent age, this nothing but 1 minus alpha. When you look at the table, it is 1.28, but it is a 90 percent age 0 0.90. When you look at the table, it is 1.645. Generally, we will go for 90, 95, 99. So, this value can be remembered. Most of the time we will go for 95. If it is 95, the z value is 1.96. Z alpha by 2, not exactly z, it is z alpha by 2. When it is 99 percentage, then the confidence coefficient, coefficient 1 minus alpha is 0 0.99, then z alpha by 2 value is 2.58. Next, we will see intervals and level of confidence. As I told you, you see that, so I have captured 7 intervals, out of 7, one interval is not lying, we are not able to capture, in the blue one we are not able to capture the true population parameter. Okay. So, this is nothing but confidence interval, so this portion is nothing but your confidence level. So, uh, 100 into 1 minus alpha percentage of intervals constructed contain mu that is 100 alpha do not. Interval extended from lower control limit is x bar minus z sigma by root n, upper control limit is x bar plus z sigma by root n. So, this we can say this is nothing but your x bar plus z sigma by root n. This left hand side is x bar minus z sigma by root n. if I say 95 percent is level of confidence, what is the meaning is, if I constructed 100 times, out of 100 times, 95 time my interval which I have constructed will capture the true population mean, only 5 percentage of time it may not capture the true population parameter. Example, a sample of 11 circuits from a large normal population has a mean resistance of 2.20 ohms. So, here the sample value is given, this is your sample mean is given. We know from the past testing that the population standard deviation is 0.35 ohms. Determine 95 percentage confidence interval for the true mean resistance of the population. So, what is given is, this is uh, n, this is your 2.20 the sample mean. So, x bar is given 2.20 plus z because the z value which we got from the table because it is a 95 percentage confidence level, if it is a 95 percentage confidence level then the z value is 1.96, sigma value is 0 0.35 it is given, there are 11 samples root of n. So, when I say this one the lower limit is 1.9932, the upper value is 2.4068. So, how we have to interpret this is? we are a 95 percentage confident that the true mean resistance is between 1.9932 and 2.4068 ohms. Although the true mean may or may not be in this interval, 95 percentage of intervals formed in this manner will contain true mean. Only 5 percentage of time this may not have the true mean that is called your significance level. Another name is called type 1 error. Another name is called producer's risk. This we will see in detail in coming lectures. Okay, we will go to the next category. We will predict the confidence interval of the mean when sigma square that is the population variance is not given. Dear students, I will summarize what we have done so far. We have seen what is the point estimate, we have seen what is the interval estimate, we have seen advantage of interval estimate, then we have seen what is the meaning of confidence level, then confidence interval. After that, we have seen how to predict the confidence interval of a population mean when sigma square is known. In the next lecture, we will go for 
predicting the population mean when sigma square is unknown. Thank you.